Hi, and welcome back to my workbench. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe below and leave comments on anything you'd like to see more of, anything you'd like me to clarify on, or any mistakes I make during the video. Quickly go over what I'm using, since I don't know if I cover everything. This is going to be a digital readout by a USB for any of these uh, cheap Chinese calipers that use this particular type of output and pinout. It actually works fine on both these designs I found. And on the ones with only a single character for millimeters, it does read out both digits off the off the digital interface. They just don't display on there on the actual front of the caliper. So that's what it's going to be a replacement for. On the actual device itself, I'm using a 3D printed connector, which I'll put the design up for. That's 22 gauge wire that I've used in here. I used a bastard file on the end of it to um, to clean up the ends and flatten them a little bit. I don't know if I went over that in the video or not. It's just held on with a bit of uh, hot glue. And then this is all 28 gauge stranded wire. DuPont 2.54 millimeter connectors with uh, DuPont connection protective ends. And then over here we've got some headers for the DuPont pins on the board. 10K resistors. A couple of 2N2222 transistors with some wiring on the back, also 28AWG. That's what all the wiring on the build is. And then I'm using an Atmega 32U4-MU based Leonardo Pro Micro. It's a Leonardo in a small form factor by a bunch of resellers. All right, and with that explained, let's get on with the build. Hi, and welcome back to the workbench. What I'm designing today is an electronic interface for a set of calipers. What it's going to do is read through the data port on the calipers. These are a cheap set, Chinese. They cost about $3 shipped. You can usually find them for around there from the usual sources. And uh, I want to see exactly what we're getting on the output here. I'm curious if it's more accurate than the gauge on the front or if that's actually the accuracy of it first off. And second, it would be nice to have a digital readout for a DRO, or if I want to automate something. These aren't terribly accurate, so if that does work, I probably will have to find a uh, setup with one of these connectors, or just make a second set of connectors. But as these are pretty cheap, they're also a good set to experiment with. I don't, I don't want to break the set I actually use more regularly. The reason I got these is because they're a carbon fiber jaws so if you're measuring something that's conductive they don't conduct anything readily uh, not like the metal ones anyway so they're a little better in that respect although the uh, metal ones i usually just put some thin capped on tape on if i need a non-conductive surface which works a little better but that being said what we're doing is adding a either usb or probably an arduino interface to the back and then outputting that to usb as a hid device possibly Maybe not as a hit device, maybe just uh, outputting over serial, but we'll, we'll see. There's a bunch of different applications you can do with that. And once I get this up and running, then I can take a look at the code uh, somebody else has already designed, fortunately. Saves me the trouble. And then we can see if it needs some additional uh, additional work on it to have a additional digital output, USB output uh, with push button for text, maybe, or just serial out, or, or see what it's got in there. Anyway, the first step is to get this working. So, designed a small interfacing connector. So, this will get pins added into it. I just had to remove the back on it, which was there for support. And then I would need to add some pins in this. What I've done is chop down some 22 gauge wire, which seems to fit in it pretty well. I'm going to insert the 22 gauge wire in here. So, it's got a bit of a lead sticking out the back when it's in and then epoxy it in place and probably scrape it flat on a small piece of uh, probably glass with some light sandpaper over it just so it'll fit in the interface pins let me see if this fits in okay i might not need much if um if it fits okay with the entire the pin out oh, the pin actually fits in as is so probably won't alter that in any way might just 
hit it lightly with some sandpaper to make sure that uh, the epoxy hasn't coated coated it. All right, well, let's get started with that. I do like the JB Weld clear weld epoxy. Works pretty well. Doesn't tend to give me too much of an issue. It comes in large containers, which is nice. Actually, there's something I want to be doing on here. I always mean to to weigh in the epoxy so I get the exact same amount of part A and part B. Visually, I think I do, but it never seems to cure exactly like I expect it to. So this time, I'm actually going to do it the way I want to. So apparently, I need a more exacting skill for this. That's fine. I'll just do it visually, as I usually do. The problem I always run into is the, let's see which part is this, the part A always seems to stand up a little prouder than the part B, so if I'm just putting a small line of it on the paper, it always screws me up when I do the, do the different parts because they don't, they don't tend to sit at the same level. But I think that's about right. So you may notice immediately that there's something missing here. I'll be uh, taking another day and grabbing all the rest of the, rest of the blanks I made up and uh, this time I think I'm going to leave off and do it by hand. But let me get some decent connectors made up and then I'll go back to going over how to turn this into an automated setup with USB output. This time I'm making up the pin cables in advance. I've already got four of them made here. And I'll show you myself making the last one. So first get a length of cable cut up, then carefully take some of the plastic sheathing off it. This is 20, 28 gauge? Yeah, 28 AWG stranded, so it's a little tough to work with. Get a bit of soldering flux on that, a bit of soldering flux on the soldering end of the wire, and then solder them together. It's easier said than done. I should probably be using the helping hands for this, but in an effort to get it done quicker, I'm probably wasting a bit of time. Yeah, so with a bit more solder and flux on there to, oh, geez, <laughs> that retained a bit more heat than I thought. With a bit more solder on there, it retains the heat a bit better, makes better contact with the soldering iron, and it's able to wet the solder at temperature easier, which is what you're seeing there. I just want to make sure it gets a good joint. Not a huge fan of the silver solder, but I'll say this for it. It does tend to look pretty markedly different when it's cooled. So while you're working with it, it does, to me anyway, it does make it a little easier to figure out if you've got the joint finished or not, or if it's cool enough to let go of. All right, and there's four cables. Now to get these glued up, I'm probably just gonna use white glue quick because the epoxy takes forever to dry. I'll see if that'll work. Got a fresh blank to try it on, and back when I'm done with that. So for this build, I'm gonna use a Pro Micro. It's got the USB support built into the chip. It's a, let's see if we can get a better view on it here. It's the Atmel 4-MU chip. That's actually got the USB support built onto the chip so you can use it for stuff like HID and other USB specific operations. It programs a little differently, but you can still do it from the Arduino control interface. So uh, let me get this soldered up back in a minute. And there we are. Now we've got the Pro Micro soldered up and ready to go. I just need to go get the software together 
for a demo run of it and see if she works. So I've soldered up the expansion board I need for it. Basically all this does is level shifting from 1.5 volts down to the necessary five volts, up to five volts in this case, I guess. It's just a couple of transistors. Those are 10K resistors. And uh, oh, these are 2N2222 transistors. They should work okay, but we'll see if they do the job. All right. Basically just takes negative and positive power input from the Arduino on those two leads. And then I've labeled all of these as necessary. This is actually easier to figure out from a diagram. You can, you can look up a level shifter pretty simply. I'll include a link to one in the article so that you can easily find what I did here and uh, probably a little neater than me trying to explain it from just looking at this circuit since it's, well, not the sloppiest work I've ever seen. The perf board I used was kind of horrible. I really don't like these. I'd actually be better off if I just used a perf board that didn't have the copper on it at all and was just through hole. And I was just using solder to make all the connections because these, these pads always pop off of the board when you're soldering and it ends up being even worse than if you didn't actually have them on there at all. So, let me go get the rest of this assembled. I'll get some demo software up, and we can see how it runs, if it runs. If I didn't screw up on anything horribly that needs to be repaired, which I've already done once, so there's always that possibility for horrible failure. But overall, the design sound, I think. So, back in a minute. It works. All right, let me show you how this works, and then I'll clear the table quick and just go over what exactly I put together here. So, it works, it's repeatable. I'm getting the second digit off of the calipers, even though they're not designed to do that on the display, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why you'd, well, pricing is why you'd do that, but, and it's repeatable. Yeah, let me get it. Accounting for the pressure I'm applying myself, that is, it's repeatable. So it seems to be fairly accurate. It zeroes out okay, and it's actually just working. So let me go over what I did here, exactly. And the software I'm using is Making Stuff Channel, their digital output. That's what I'm gonna base this off of. It's a quick little set of code that works great. It's open source. Thanks to those guys for actually coming up with it. So. What I've got here is the set of digital calipers with the interface I designed. And I needed to add a little bit of tape on it to buffer it out. It wasn't making good enough contact with the switches, uh, which I was testing just by checking between ground and positive for 1.2 volts, which is what the battery runs on. So once I got the connections working correctly, that was fine. Uh, the things you need to hook up are the, the clock line, the data line, and then the ground to the common. What I've made here is a circuit, which I'll put over in the article. And it's just a level shifter to shift 1.2 volts over to five volt data, so it can read it in. It's a couple of transistors, four resistors, and then just wired correctly in the sequence to make that work. Let's see, I can give you a better view of it. There we go. So that's it. There's not much to it. It's just a few wires, a couple of transistors, and four 10K resistors, all wired up properly with a positive and negative leads to wire into the transistors and uh, provide the ground plane for the meter itself. And for the other things I wanna do with it, what I ended up using was the, and I think I already showed you this, but we'll zoom in on it quick, the Yatmel Mega32U4-MU chip, based Pro Micro. What this actually is, is a Leonardo, just shrunk down to size. It's available from a bunch of different manufacturers, so you can find these relatively inexpensive, and they do make great kit because you can use the USB for things, essentially. It's a controllable part of the chip rather than being an off-board, like the CH3, CH340s or whatever um, they'd have on the the other Arduinos, the, the previous ones, they would have been a, they wouldn't have been part of the the actual processor, so you couldn't use them effectively for any of your projects, whereas 
On this one, you can actually make USB part of what you're doing, which will be neat and part of what I'll, I'll use on it going forward. And then you can just hook it up with the USB. And I was using PuTTY for the serial readout, the Linux version of PuTTY, which you have to manually change the font size for. That's not ideal either. Probably even for an initial version, what I'll do is create a serial read library based program using, I don't know, GTK for the graphics side of things. So it just pops a window up and it'll give you the give you the display on it. I'll try to get that going quickly. It might actually be done by the time I publish this or if not soon thereafter. And that's it. It works. It's a good idea. I'll come out with uh, different connectors. If anybody needs a different 3D connector and they're not capable of designing their own, I'd be happy to make a slightly different connector for you. And I, I think I do have a, another set of calipers that I'd like to also set up with one of these, so I'll be designing a connector for that. That's about it for now. Again, if you like watching, please subscribe down below. Leave a comment on anything you'd like to know more about, or if you'd like me to design something else, or if you have any questions on this, I can always go back over it or add to the software um, any feature set you'd like once I get cracking on that. See you next time.